Hey, welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. Today, I've got corn growing in my raised bed here. It's a weird place to put corn, but I think this is gonna work. I really don't have another spot for it, and I wanted to get some sweet corn in the ground. This has already sprouted. It was about 10 days ago, nine days ago or so, when I planted this. I'm gonna bring you guys along and show you the process of how I amended the soil, uh, removed, of course, the, the previous crop, which was cucumbers in here, how I amended the soil, and then uh, how I got these planted, spacing and all that. So you guys can mimic this if you guys want to do this as well. Now this is pretty in depth on what I did. It's going to be a longer video because I want to show everything and kind of what I did so you guys can mimic it. Let's get to it. We'll cut them off so we leave the roots in the ground. Another big pickle. So we're gonna leave all the roots in the ground. It's gonna be good for the soil. I am gonna have to come through and remove all the wood chips on top here. We'll see if we can get these out. These sometimes give me some trouble. If I wiggle them back and forth a little bit, open up that hole a little. Yep, they can come out, there we go. Now to remove all the drip line. So this is probably the worst part of this is trying to remove this mulch, but it needs to be done. We got to get down to the soil. We're getting it right into the wheelbarrow here. So I filled the wheelbarrow and I realized I need the wheelbarrow to get the compost from over there, that pile, into the bed. So I laid out a tarp here, dumped this onto the tarp so it holds it because it might be a couple days till I can actually put it back on. And in fact, probably a week. So if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know probably what amendments I'm gonna be using. Blood meal is really important this time. A lot of times I say this isn't that important. I'm gonna be growing corn, which is a heavy nitrogen feeder. It's a 1200. They need a lot of nitrogen, so I'll be putting that in. We've got this all-purpose fertilizer, which is a 624. So unlike some of these other fertilizers, this is a wide range. It's made from chicken manure. It is a organic, but that four, the potassium, is kind of important because most of these don't have it. And then bone meal, which is a 0, 10, 0 so it's all uh, phosphorus, which is good for root development and everything. And then cottonseed meal I'm going to do. So I don't do this too often, but this is a 6 one, one. It's just another form of nitrogen. And again, I need a lot of nitrogen. So we're putting a fair amount of nitrogen in the soil but it's not gonna overdo it um, because, I mean, it's corn. They, they thrive on a lot of nitrogen. I'm gonna do earthworm castings, which earthworm castings aren't really for nutrients. I think they're like, it's like a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 or something like that it says, but I mean, even so, it's not, it's not really for uh, nutrients. It's really just to add microbes into the soil. So I'm just gonna evenly broadcast this all around. And again, I'm, I'm using a lot more than I usually do. And a lot of times I'll just go into a hole, just one hole that I'm planting in. But in this case, this corn is gonna be every eight inches. And so because of that, I'm just gonna broadcast this all around. Now we're gonna do those earthworm castings. And that's just gonna help the soil start to break this stuff down. Earthworm castings are so good. Now, the best option to not waste a whole lot is to do like a tea, but I don't really feel like doing that. So we can just add it in and then we'll water it in and it'll act like a tea. All right, so for any of you that have not seen this, this is a broad fork. So they're just tines that go into the ground. There's heavy duty, this is a good one. And I got this for my birthday actually. My birthday was pretty recent, so. Basically, you just stick it in the ground, then you step on it, wiggle it in, and then you can pull it up and create a little bit of air pockets in the ground. Um, it's not really tilling because all it's doing is aerating the soil. Now, I've got to get up into this bed for this. This will go, as you can see, all the way down. It's 14 inches, and then I just lift like so. So that's creating aeration. We'll get down even more. 
can see. So that lifts everything up, but it's not messing with the soil biome because it's not turning things over. All it's doing is lifting a little, creating some air pockets, which are valuable. So here's my big pile of compost. It's 10 yards that I had delivered here. But compost is not for nutrients either. Now it does add some nutrients, but the main reason for this is to cover those amendments that I put in. They start breaking down, keep them moist, but also to add molds and you know beneficial microbes back into the soil and also some much needed organic matter. Now we are going to just water this down. In four or five days, we're gonna get some heavy rains coming, but we are watering this, just kind of wetting it. And that's gonna help kind of compress this compost a little, help keep it from blowing away, and also start those nutrients to start breaking down. Cause we don't want this soil to dry out to make this not as hydrophobic. And it'll allow us to get deeper in there because super dry soil is hydrophobic so I'm ready to plant here so the spacing i'm doing which i did in my corn patch over here which worked out great i'm doing nine inches but i'm doing a full nine inches uh, it's not a row where it's nine inch and then another row that's like wide this is a patch so i'm gonna have every single plant nine inches away from each other and i'll show you how i do this first i need to have enough space between the side uh, and the plant. So we've got to come in four inches, four inches, and right here is going to be the first hole. I can put that little marker there. And by the way, this is what I'm planting. I got it from Haas. It's a glacial sweet corn. It looked really good. I'm super white. And um, they say it's really sweet. And it's 75 days, so that's going to produce quickly. I'm just going like that putting a hole that's the first one and let's go over here this is we'll call this one the first one just because it'll be easier that way there's one so every nine inches I am placing a hole so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna come over now if you look I want to be 10 inches roughly so there's 10 inches so there's 10 inches but if you look that's more like nine inches so we're coming over and we're going to be right there and that's the second that's the next row is right in the center of these two right we're doing an alternating so that kind of comes in triangles the next set the holes will be there so it'll kind of be a grid pattern All right, so we got this grid pattern laid out and now we're just gonna drop the seeds in. See how many I got, cause I got 150 seeds in here. So I got 57, so that's enough to put two per hole. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So it's two per hole. Those are the seeds. It's that sweet glacial sweet corn. So one, two, three, four. Cover these holes, back up. I'm gonna put a little pressure on each hole to make sure there's good soil contact. Replace this drip line. Drip line's back on. Now it's time to water this and I'm gonna overhead water. You might ask, why not use the drip line? Well, I need to completely cover this because I've got individual seeds in there and they don't have roots yet, so I need need to really drench this, cover this whole thing, get this soaked. The drip lines will soak up and soak into where the seeds are, but generally they need a little bit of roots to kind of get down deep because the drip lines are more of like a deep water. They don't really water the surface and the seeds are kind of in the surface. So you get the surface watered. I'm going to have to come back actually every single day and water this until they sprout. And after they sprout, then it's gonna be every other day for about a week until they hit a point where they're 
maybe two inches tall, three inches tall. And then I can throw this mulch on top, which will help keep that moisture in. And then about once a week, I can come in water or use the drip irrigation. I'll bring you guys back in a week or two once I'm able to get some sprouts. By the way, I always like doing this. Today is July 15th, so we can see just how fast this is to sprout and grow. And of course, I always bring you guys back when I'm harvesting so we can see from July 15th how long this took. Is it 75 days or is it more? We will see. Uh, you know, just because the packet says 75 days doesn't mean that's what we're going to get. Well, guys, today is July 19th and we've got corn sprouts. Look at that. A lot of these have started coming up. Not all of them yet. That's just the start. But I've got probably maybe half of them maybe a little less than half you can see them everywhere so that's really good and that's quicker than i thought so i really expected this to be 10 days that's what they say but i believe three four days max that was really quick i'll wait a couple more days see how these grow up so i actually had kept this covered because it was so hot afraid that that would kind of affect the sprouting it wasn't fully covered there's a 40 percent shade cloth but having that covered on there kind of dropped the temperature a little bit Again, uh, it was really hot. So check it out. It is July 22nd, and this is three days since we had our first pop up. And that was pretty quick. That was, uh, I think uh, this is still only like eight, nine days from planting. So this isn't the full 10, but I don't have all of them popped up still. Okay, so that one is just starting to pop up. I'm missing one there. That one just is starting again. Uh, missing one there. I think there's like four of them. There's one missing. So there's a couple haven't popped up yet, but they could in the next couple days. But it does look like the vast majority have popped up. I've only got a handful of them that haven't yet. So we're almost there. And I'm actually happy that I'm not having to cut back a whole bunch of doubles because that's, that's a pain. So, I mean, the fact that almost all of them have some coming up, I'm missing just a couple. That'll be fine. That's that's okay. I can have, instead of, I think it was 56 plants, I can have 54, 53. That's okay. So that's not a big deal. I'm done with this now. I just want to make sure it was cool enough for the germination. But now uh, we're going to actually, starting tonight, get like eight days of rain is going to drop the temperature down to the high 80s versus right now it's in the hundreds <laughs> in the day high 90s low hundreds uh so that's going to drop it so that's nice so i i can put this away which i'm going to do but i'm not ready to put the mulch on yet they're just not tall enough if i throw the mulch on i have a feeling that it's going to crush some of the babies so i got to wait a couple days for that but it's going to rain for eight days straight so Unfortunately, I have to wait till after it rains and these will be pretty tall by then, but that's fine. And I'll bring you guys back in a couple weeks on some other videos on the progression of these and how they're doing. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching everyone. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. I will see you on the next video. Now you guys tried to escape the daily grind.